I mean, this fight was coming up. These, uh, um, the, the, you know what I mean? The eight, they're going to have eight geezers fighting for this belt, and they've got to fight each other, blah, blah, blah. They could have thrown me in there, like, and there's a chance I would have lost, because I'm 52 now. But they weren't going to chance that. They'd rather me pass the belt down. Or it could have gone the wrong, wrong way around. I might have fucking won again, like. Boxing, my dad was a boxer up to 34 years of age. I mean, back in the 60s, that was, that was old. You don't get many boxers after 30 years of age. And uh, he was a coach as well. And he's just trained the boys. He used to have a football Bedgrove Dynamos, a football team from Ellsbury, what he started up. I think he even out the kids out, the netball team. And uh, he, he was a local wild man, quiet but a tough bastard, yeah. So how did you start boxing? And I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what happened. I was over a place called Southcourt. Anyone from Ellsbury knows Southcourt. But back in the 60s, there were tough Irish families, and in, in, uh, there was this family called of Fitch Simmons or Fitch Patrick. Fitch Simmons, I'm sure. There's a Liam Fitch Simmons, and I had a row with one of the younger brothers, a little bit older than me, but I had a row with him, like, and he didn't go to nothing, like. And he come back. He, he was with a fella called Willie Sawyers. Bless him, he's dead now. Lovely guy, and he had his sister. I was eight at the time. His sister was a bit old, maybe a teenager, like you know. And fuck me, she gave me a fucking eye, and she hit me so hard I went straight down. And I think she laid the boot in when I was down. And the mistake I'd done was get back up because she fucking levered me again and put me down again. And I had fucking blood coming out of my face and everything. And I got back and she grabbed me by the air and the fucking nails are going everywhere. And I never took an, I didn't know, I've probably never been beat like that in my life, you know what I mean? Even since then, like. I remember their names, like, uh, Fitz, Fitz. Simmons, Fitz Simmons, yeah. And uh, I went in, I said to my fucking grand, she said, what happened, like? She was all over me, like, fixing me up. And I said, I got beat up by a bird, like, you know. And I oh, fucking, she had tits and everything at that age, like 13. But from then, then, then on, I went down to boxing club, like, like. And uh, I, I learned then, you don't fight with women, like, because they can fucking give hard, like, you know. But it was back in the 60s, there were some hard Irish families in, in Ellsbury, like, especially Southcourt, like. And then, like, if you cross them, like, you, you're going to get fucking hurt, like, you know. And I pushed my luck with her brother and got a serious spanking off of her. So but, how, how did you first meet Joe and how did you get involved with... Joe, I trained a boy up when I was in prison in, in, in Milton Kings. Matt Legg, lovely boy he was, like, you know, and he was getting into trouble, bless him, like. And uh, I think he was after that thing's what kids are when he was 17, like, it's respect. All he wanted was respect. And he liked the gangsters, he liked reading the books of Ronnie Cray, Reggie Cray, and all the top gangsters, like, you know. And he, he was going the wrong way, you know, he was going to get himself into trouble. And I said, you know, one thing what the gangsters, what, what they love? I said, they love a fighter. And I said, if I could train you up, like, you know what I mean? You stick the boxing. He was a big boy at the time, not only a kid, like, he had a good heart on him. And I trained it, and this boy was fucking, he was mustard, like, he was top. I believe he, he who's he boxed? He boxed at, um, that heavyweight's on the scene now to become a world champion, like, from Watford. He, he didn't do too well against him, like, but, People have seen the fight, said he's the only bloke that ever went forward and tried to take him out, like, you know. Uh, what's his name? His name's gone now. And he was he fought the bloke off a prize fighter as well. Three times world champion. And he had three different weights, he three times world champion, like. He fought him. And he he, uh, he got stopped in the, in the third round, but he fucking, he goes out there and everyone else, he's destroyed, like. He was a one-off. He, he went to the finals of the ABA, he should have won the ABAs. And um, that was fantastic. That, that really a dream come true with him, like, you know what I mean? So, and then how did you meet Joe? And Joey, they took me up to London and they, 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 they introduced me to Joey. I didn't really know, I'm illiterate, like, I can't read books. I, the only thing I ever see of them lot was, uh, uh, was uh, videos of, of, of Roy Shaw and Lenny McLean, like. And I used to like, because I was, I was the idiot, used to get kicked up the arse all the time, because I couldn't get by, and the respect they got, like. When I got up to London, I met Roy and, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, fucking, what's his name? Lenny and then, Roy. Uh, Roy, Lenny, and um, all the others then, like. Joey, 
Joey, I like Joey, Joey. I like the old man as well. They sat me down with him one night, like, you know, and he moved, he said he moved his wife out. He said, you sit here, like, the wife would sit over there. Would you like a drink? I told him I didn't drink. And it, there was something about them, like, uh, and the, the, the firm, what was left of the Cray twins, and, and all, all the lot of them, you know, they, they're the only people, really, who never abused me, like, you know what I mean? And they treated me nicely. They, they were nice guys. Oh, they were gangsters, I know. But they were good to me as a fighter. So you started fighting for Mean Machine. Mean Machine, can, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about the fights? Yeah, who I, did you fight? I, I did. I, I forget their names. I was fighting anyone in and out of the ring all the fucking time, weren't I? Um, I did lose my rag. I regret it. I'm sorry. Like, you know, obviously I've hurt a few people. I regret that I've hurt them. Like, I was getting paid. You know what I mean? At the time, you think, like, I get paid to bash people up, like, in, in, inside the ring, outside. You forget the people have got family there, like, you know, they've got wives, children, kids, aunties, everything. You don't realise you hurt them as well, like. And yeah, I, I used to bash people about. I used to even jump out of the ring and bash people outside the ring. I used to bash people anywhere I fucking went. That's the way it was. That's the only way I was educated, like, you know what I mean? If you don't bash someone, you're going to get bashed yourself. It was wrong. I know it was wrong. But it's the way of life. So you fought someone to become the governor. Yeah. Tell us about that fight. So what did it mean to you, actually winning the governor title? Well, I wanted a few warm-up fights, about five warm-up fights. But because I was sparring with Matt Legg, what's, what's fought back in former world champions, and like these boys are going to be world champions, like, and the top boys, like, he turned around to them and said, Look, you don't fucking, this bloke doesn't need to train for a fight, you know what I mean? He's fit and he doesn't need warm up fights. You put him with who you've got, the top boys, and he'll beat them. But so, um, I got too fucking angry at the time. I don't know what happened to me, like, you know what I mean? And I got in there and the fucking crowd was shouting, they were, they were rude to me like. And I got out and I started beating them up and I felt I knocked someone out then. And I got in and I said, you know, what are the rules? There's no rules in the governor's belt, anything goes. So I've hit him, I've hit him in the bollocks, so I've bitten people, head butted people. That's the, the only not life I knew like, you know, it was to win. And I could honestly say, not now, because I've got kids, I've slowed down. I would have done anything to win a fight. I would have bit someone's fucking bollocks off. I would have tried, and when, it, when you get unstuck and, and, and you fucking, you start getting wound up, I think something kill, kicks in a lot of killer instinct, like, you know what I mean? And you'd go, I was a bastard for biting as well, bitting people's ears and noses off. I regret it, it was wrong, like, but it was the only instinct, you know, like, you know what I mean? Or banging in the bollocks or, anything goes like or or pulling them over the red rope so they go head first on the floor it's wrong i know but it was a killer instinct i don't know why i had it where i got it from maybe my great grandfather was a, a gypsy jack cooper he changed changed his name to gypsy uh gypsy jack to george coop george cooper to jack coop because he killed a couple of guys and done manslaughter the first time second time he disappeared like they reckon he, they put him on a boat up in liverpool and coached him off to australia I don't know, I don't ever know what ended that story. And so that fight you had to win the governor title. Yeah. Well, how did you win that? Was it yeah, I knocked out? him out, I hit him in the bollocks and that was it, like, he went out, bless him, like, you know. I spoke to him after, like, you know, uh, there was a fucking riot after. I, everywhere I went, I created a, a riot and I really regret it. But that was one of the nicest things, or someone then, like, you know what I mean? I got a lot of work out, of film work, it was fantastic, I was, everything was coming to my lap. But it was just the fact that I was illiterate, I couldn't fucking read or write, that I used to have trouble with the lines, I used to forget my lines, everything was going great, you know. I hope when I pass this belt down, that it's going to go to someone what can have a round, a little bit clever up top, like, because he can earn a lot of money out of this, like. It's the only belt in the world, like, they don't do twos or threes of them, you know, there's one belt and it's the governor's belt and it's come from Lenny and it's gone from Roy to Lenny to Cliff Fields like these people were serious people in their day these are people even if they walk this way I'd walk out their way these are top geezers like and main respect to them like you know what I mean they were top and this is where the belt's coming from it's only getting passed down from me I don't know I'll probably go I don't know if I'll be a legend I don't know what will happen to me but I'm glad to pass it down, like, it's a bit of history they're getting. 
So what did it mean to you, if you sort of sum up what it meant to you to be the, the governor? What the fucking governor? Who's the governor? I'm the governor! Top of the world, mate. No one could touch me. I'd fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. I could be sitting on a shitter, someone could kick the door in, and I'd still fight. I was the governor. I felt good. I was on top of the world. Best thing that ever happened. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, like. And it meant every. you know what I mean? It was great. Fantastic, like. Geezer out of the gutter, fucking shit, boy. Come from nowhere, like. Stand up with a belt, what these people have had, like, yeah, of course it was something, like, you know, I was someone. It's a shame I just couldn't fucking go along with it, like, with the film world, like, you know, because I had the opportunity there, like, and it's my own fault, lack of education, I fucked up, like, you know. But still people, as they go, if I'm, if I'm working from a brother on a door somewhere, they'll go past with a whip, who's the governor? I'm the governor! And it still goes on now, like, it's brilliant, like, you know. And I'm proud to pass the belt down, like, you know what I mean? Because I know this geezer with Arthur Sabby's there, like, he's going to... He, and it's not going to be just one-on-to-one. -one. The geezer's going to have one fight, then another fight. So he's going to be... He's going to have to be fucking fit, like, you know what I mean? And he, if he meets someone like me what will bite and tear your fucking teeth out and try and kill you... You, you've got to be fucking, you've got to be, you've got to be mean to get in there, like. And there's another fella you were saying earlier, the one with the tattoos, like, you know? Colin Wilby. Colin Wilby. Yeah. That man's a fucking animal, like, you know what I mean? He can hit hard, fucking hard, like, you know? And if he hits you, he's going to fucking hurt you, like. You got, you, this, this is going to be a great, a great challenge. And who wins this is going to have this belt and they're going to deserve it, like. And I hope they earn a fucking lot of money out of it as well. What was the atmosphere like at fighting at places like Caesars for me? Caesars, uh, uh, there was up north, Corby, Gypsy Camps. Yeah, what's uh, like, what, say someone's never been to an unlicensed fight before, what can they Fantastic, expect? electrifying. And I mean, they'll see old gangsters, what books about, what's been on TV like. It's a thing what draws, you know what I mean, people together like. It's the way. It's the way fighting's begun, like, you know what I mean? It's electric fighting, it's a good atmosphere, like, you know what I mean? Fantastic atmosphere. And so, you get you get some lovely characters there. They're very friendly, like, you know what I mean? Nice guys, tough guys, a lot of tough guys there. And a lot of boys what have done it and been there, like, you know what I mean? So these fights that are happening on the 13th next month, yeah. What can we expect? So just tell us a bit about, because it's a different format, like it's a knockout competition. Isn't fantastic, it? mate. So, could you just tell us about that? This will be a one-off, mate. Don't miss it, because it'll be a fantastic show. You know, um, especially for the governor's belt, like, you know what I mean? If you miss this, you're going to miss a bit of history. It's going to, fireworks going to go off, like, it's going to be great. You're going to miss, you, you, you're going to watch some, if you're there, what will last for years and years and years. It'll be a fantastic, and I'm, I'm going to be there. I'll have to pass the belt down. Like, it broke me up, but it'll be good. It'll be fantastic. It'll be a part of history.